Hi, I'm Liam Eagle. I'm a research director at 451 Research and I cover cloud hosting and managed services. To define uh, an alternative public cloud, uh, you need to kind of start with what it isn't. So uh, it's not one of the handful of hyperscale public cloud vendors. Uh, that obviously doesn't refine the list all that much, but what we find is that a lot of companies when they're out there looking for cloud services want a credible alternative to the hyperscalers. And so what they need is a bar that kind of helps define what a credible alternative is. There are a few components to that. So the first is the components of the service. Uh, does it have the object and block storage? Does it have separate compute functions? Does it have things like DNS and load balancing? Uh, the next category would be sort of the controls, right? Does it have APIs for provisioning and for operation? Uh, third would be kind of the quality of the service, right? Does it have uh, a quality of components and a level of uh, performance SLA that are sort of comparable to the, to the leading vendors? Um, and then uh, next would be sort of the regional footprint, right? Does it have a, a presence that extends globally? Uh, and then finally would be uh, compliance, right? Does it meet the sort of key regulatory standards that companies are gonna come up against? So you can see that there's a bar for being considered, you know, a, a credible alternative public cloud. Uh, and I would imagine that bar is gonna continue to rise over time as things like container management become more standard functions of the cloud platform. So the core benefits of the alternative public cloud are the same benefits as uh, the public cloud in general, right? Cost, performance, availability, uh, security, uh, uh, agility for the organization. Uh, but what we find is that a lot of organizations uh, struggle with the complexity when they're trying to accomplish those benefits in the cloud. And so for a lot of the alternative providers, uh, some of the key benefits are actually kind of this addition by subtraction approach. Uh, so the first sort of category there would be simplicity, right? Simplicity of the user interface, uh, simplicity of the catalog, uh, simplicity of the pricing, uh, and then uh, the next would be kind of the, 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 the simplicity of the learning curve. So uh, it's sort of a shorter time from starting to use it to accomplishing or being able to accomplish what you want. Uh, and then the third would be pricing, and this is probably the biggest thing for a lot of organizations is uh, the pricing is uh, less complex and in a lot of cases is, is, is more affordable for the use case. Uh, and then on the flip side, uh, a lot of the alternative providers, uh, or there are some cases where the alternative providers would offer something uh, more than the hyperscaler. So for instance, they may bundle more management or more uh, customer service in with the core offering. The company that's gonna benefit the most from working with an alternative public cloud provider is one that understands the value of the public cloud, but doesn't necessarily want to deal with the complexity or doesn't have the, the, the technical capabilities to deal with the advanced features of some of the hyperscale platforms. So, for example, a company that wants to uh, build a small application in a simple environment uh, and, and maybe wants some management help with the infrastructure that, that's underlying it, um, but you know they still want to use Kubernetes and, and, and over time they want to be able to scale when the demand arrives. That's a, good, that's a good example of a use case for the, for the alternative. Some companies are looking at alternative public clouds as instead of the hyperscale public cloud, uh, but many companies are looking at them in addition to. Uh, our survey research, uh, most companies say they're using multiple different public cloud vendors, uh, and they're doing that for the sake of diversity, but they're also doing it to uh, access the, the sort of key individual features of those different public cloud vendors. And so if you think of the alternative vendors and their key features being simplicity, cost, uh, ease of use, uh, you know, that sort of begins to illustrate what the, uh, the use case for those kinds of services in a broader portfolio of cloud offerings might be. So for instance, you might have, you know, a dev team within a large organization that is doing some experimentation and testing on an application that they're building. Uh, and they want to do it in a simple and cost-effective environment, uh, and maybe they want to experiment with it there and even take it to production there. Uh, or you might have uh, you know, a marketing team that doesn't have any technical skills, or at least not the technical skills necessary to work with the sort of advanced complex functions of a hyperscaler, uh, but they're building out the digital side of a marketing campaign. You know, so there's, there's examples where uh, alternative can mean instead of, and then there's examples where alternative can mean in addition to.